one of the things I've learned about doing Eden is that if you treat people, if you work with people in the way that you would do it in your own home, things work very differently to if you do it with a kind of series of third-party edicts. The modern world often blinds us to the fact that we're people. That actually if you stop categorizing people and remember their name and their family and what inspires them in the round, you can have a conversation in which the narrative that you bring to the table, actually the dreams that you had, they had similar dreams. Don't be arrogant. Everybody wants to do something that's important that makes you just feel a bit lighter on your feet and alive. So if you can create a story in which people can see themselves, magic happens. And the thing that I'd learned from the music industry was that if you personally love something, there will be millions of other people who love it too. The issue is simply, will they hear about it? So it's a kind of a marketing issue. It's about trusting your instincts. And it's also about making sure you kill people who are negative. <laughs> it is. You know, you know all those f***ers in your companies who tell you that it can't be done, it won't be done? Cynics, get rid of cynics. Don't allow them anywhere near you. And if there are any HR people here, close your ears. Kill negative people! <laughs> because they get rid of your dreams. And if you haven't got dreams, you are dead. I was invited to the Royal Horticulture Society after Heligan, the, we called it the Lost Gardens of Heligan, which is a sort of marketing thing. And the public poured in. They poured in because the TV programme, the BBC, forgot to mention at the end of the documentary they made about us that we weren't open yet. A great business thing. The, the public came in and we didn't know what to do with them. So eventually my builder ripped out the toilet out the port loo and we started charging people. And then they'd come in and they'd say, what the hell's up there? And you say, no idea, mate, but here's a machete. Why don't you go and find out? So they were paying to come in and doing the work. Good business tip. It is just the most amazing time to be alive. I doubt there has been a period of 30 years between now and the next 30 years where it's ever been as exciting to find out whether we're worthy of the title Homo sapiens. Because what a joke if we're not, we'll fry. I mean, hell, that's a game show, isn't it? It's wonderful. A lot of the techniques that many of you use in ordinary business, just cop hold it. If you've got a pen, write down a couple of things, okay? Go and see the website of the Manchester Project in Pittsburgh. It is the most inspirational school on earth. Go and see the website of the Griffin Hospital outside Boston. And what they'll tell you are that the people who have set up these miraculous places are people like you and me at their kitchen table asking what great looks like and then playing it back. And amazingly, they're successful. The scope for new business is monumental. Absolutely monumental. But you've got to rebuild the way you look at it. We're going to see businesses developing which are about business, but they're about sharing. Sharing is going to be the buzzword over the next 20 years as we start seeing how, why have 400 people with 400 lawns each got a lawnmower? That sort of thing, you know, that's a childlike level. And when you start thinking like that, you can see all sorts of things and opportunities that could evolve from looking at those opportunities in a different, different way. So that's really what I wanted to come and tell you. A, that we're not a leisure theme park. B, that the future is bloody exciting. See that the brains you've brought to being as successful as you are to be here today, there are lots of other opportunities out there. So don't, don't be scared of it. Embrace it. Grab it. Go and meet some people you're not meant to meet. Um, also, if I see a CV which doesn't have any failure on it, I'm very suspicious. How do you know how people are going to react if they fail, if they've never failed? They've either lied and they have failed and haven't told you, which they haven't got the balls to tell you, in which case don't hire them, or they haven't failed, which is terribly risky. Because to be honest, people who haven't failed haven't really tried very hard. I mean, is there anybody in this room who hasn't failed? Great, we're the bunch of losers. <laughs> yeah, see, you can tell the quality. You've also got to show the respect to the professions. I mean, it's all very well me getting up like Jack the Lad, but behind the scenes, you know, you need really good finance people, you need really good project managers. Respect each of those professions and enjoy them. Don't try and second guess people who are good at what they do. Just remember to be good at what you do, because most people spend most of their time trying to do everybody else's job as well. And actually, if I did, if I did that, Eden would be in chaos. <laughs>